If Marvel Comics has taught us anything, it's that extraordinary incidents and accidents can cause people to develop superpowers. Be it getting bitten by a radioactive spider or being exposed to gamma radiation, that's just how it goes. But did you know there are actually real life situations where it's happened? These are people who gained real superpowers after an event. Number 20. Tony Chikoria, a bolt from the blue. This is Tony Chikoria. He was 42, very fit and robust, a former college football player who had become a well-regarded orthopedic surgeon in a small city in upstate New York. One afternoon in 1994, he was at a lakeside pavilion for a family gathering. The day seemed to be going so well, except for a few storm clouds off in the distance. But he thought nothing of it at the time. He headed inside to make a phone call, and what happened next came as a huge shock to Mr. Chikoria. As he reached for the phone, lightning had struck the house and traveled through the phone line, thus striking Tony. He flew back and had an extremely vivid out-of-body experience, and when he awoke, something very strange had happened. He felt that he could sense music and sound in a very deep and profound way, more now than ever before. He had previously, of course, enjoyed music, but something felt very different about it now. Tony would soon be able to start learning instruments at an incredible pace, his favorite being the piano. And after about a year, it seemed as though he could be playing in an orchestra. What do you think? Are his newfound powers in music from the lightning strike, or were they always there simply waiting? Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now it's time for the sweet topic. This image is a recreation of a legend, a story that's been told for years, from one person to the next, about something a man claims to have once seen. He says that he saw a truck come hurtling down the road. It was spindling along, not a care in the world, but then a woman stepped out from the nearby trees and wandered into the road. The guy says he screamed, but it was too late. The truck was moving too fast. It was going to hit her, but then something miraculous happened. The truck slammed into her and she was fine front of the truck would be totally crushed as if she had super strength, and then she simply walked away unfazed. He said she swaggered off without a care in the world as if nothing had ever happened. Lots of people have said that he's an attention seeker that's making up stories, however he insists that what he saw happen was true, and he's been trying to track down the woman ever since. What do you think? As always, comment down below using the hashtag sweet topic and let us know your opinion in relation to what we just showed you on the screen. Number 19. Franco Magnani Franco Magnani, like Tony Cicoria, discovered an unexpected creative ability. Magnani worked as a chef in Italy and took a vacation to San Francisco in 1965, and that's when he met his wife. During his stay, he developed a severe illness, and as a result of his sickness, he began to have high fever dreams that had the characteristics of seizures. His boyhood town in Tuscany would appear to him during this time, and he would view it as though it had appeared before the Nazis arrived. Rather than just being in front of him, though, he described the images as raising up. He then painted in amazing detail the visual sensations that he'd experienced in his mind. He felt compelled to paint the images from his boyhood home and was surprised to discover that he was able to accomplish it despite never having had any professional artistic instruction in his life. He began to paint hundreds of memory paintings of the houses, streets, and lush surroundings of his pre-war Pontito. Each had a distinct viewpoint on the structures, streets, and general surroundings. 
Franco imagined images that were so vivid and three-dimensional that he could move his head to see them from various angles while he painted, and he was aware of the noises and scents of the environment. It was this ambition to recapture the Pontito of his childhood that became the driving force behind his life from that point on. Number 18. Tommy McHugh Tommy McHugh was 54 years old when he had a stroke that would change his life. His stroke, which was caused by bleeding in both hemispheres of his brain, had unlocked an enormous artistic potential. Doctors at a hospital in Liverpool would use a clip and a coil to close the wounds and stop the bleeding. Tommy would come home 10 days later with a lady who they say said was my wife according to him. He had also said that he felt disoriented and bewildered for the first several weeks after surgery. This occurrence is very uncommon, with just two previous recorded instances of sudden creative production after brain damage having occurred elsewhere in the globe. Apart from the two previous entries on this list, Tommy had a general artistic potential instead of something in a specific domain. His ex-wife, who was caring for him at the time, was unable to comprehend comprehend what he was saying and handed him a pen and paper, instructing him to write down what he was trying to communicate. Instead of just writing down what he needed, he began writing poems and using beautifully written language to express his feelings. Then Tommy began to create hundreds of pencil sketches and felt tip drawings in a short period of time. His large scale pastel paintings on the walls of his home were followed by sculptures and then more paintings. He had become an artist in the purest sense. Number 17, Jason Paget. Now we're going to take a step back from the arts and into something much more different. Jason Paget was just a very normal guy, just looking for ladies and drinking all the time. And once after a night of drinking, he was attacked by two men outside of a bar in Alaska. All they would end up taking was his leather jacket but they also unknowingly and unintentionally gave him a gift as well. Jason could now identify and understand geometry and math unlike anyone else in the world. Some people have even gone so far as to call him a genius. You look at numbers just as being fractals. Not only is he able to draw and understand complex math problems, he has this insane talent for drawing geometric designs called fractals, which for those of you who know, fractals are insanely difficult to design, let alone draw by hand. Everything in his life had begun to revolve around math. Even something as simple as brushing his teeth became 16 brush strokes per tooth. After this change in perception, he began to shift his lifestyle and to see that his way of living was unattainable and shallow. And since the attack, he has completely shifted the way that he lives. Number 16. Orlando Sorrell Orlando Sorrell was just 10 years old when he collapsed on the ground and remained there for a very long time. A baseball had slammed into the side of his skull as he raced to first base. When he awoke and rose to his feet, he proceeded to play the game despite a throbbing headache. After he went home, he did not tell his parents about the accident and therefore didn't get medical treatment, despite the fact that he had a severe headache that lasted for months. Orlando was just a normal kid from Virginia when this happened to him in 1979, but when the headaches subsided a year later, he realized that he'd been left with an odd side effect that he'd never noticed before. In his mind, he could do complicated calendrical calculations at breakneck speed and with insane precision. This means that he could calculate the number of days between two dates, or, for example, the number of times that January 6th had fallen on a Saturday all in an instant. He's also able to remember every aspect of his life since the accident, even the clothing that one of his friends wore on a certain day years ago, as well as his every meal. Sorrell had developed into what is known as an acquired savant, meaning someone who's perfectly ordinary until they suffer a brain injury, after which they develop a remarkable ability such as a photographic memory. This sounds like a gift, but it might as well be a curse. Number 15, Alonzo Clemens. 
It is really crazy to see how trauma and pain can unlock these incredible abilities in people. And though they lose certain mental processes, they also gain some really incredible powers. Alonzo, for example, had to go through a very traumatic experience in order to gain his abilities as well. He would be injured in a car accident as a child, which altered the way that he thought, learned, and communicated. While the injury caused great loss, it also resulted in a miracle because as he puts it, God had provided him a gift. He began to show a great interest in modeling materials, as well as a strong desire to create sculpture. Even when he didn't have access to modeling clay, his desire to create animal models was so strong that he discovered things in his surroundings that he could sculpt with. He practiced his craft in anonymity for almost two decades, until the early 1980s, when the film Rain Man drew worldwide media attention to a condition known as Savant Syndrome. After the general public was exposed to this condition, Clemens would be featured on shows like 60 Minutes, Geraldo, and the Discovery Channel's World of Wonder as one of the world's prolific savants. Number 14, Kim Peek. Speaking of Rain Man, Dustin Hoffman openly praised and recognized the genius of Kim Peek during his Oscar acceptance speech for the film. It was the least that he could do for the man who had inspired the character that Hoffman portrayed, but this was far from the peak of Peek's career. It was just the event that propelled him closer to the spotlight. Peek was, in fact, born with his problems and gifts, and had struggled with developmental issues from an early age. He couldn't walk until he was four years old, and even then had a weird and long limp. He had a lot of issues with motor skills and was even dismissed from school after just one day, all for disturbing class. Peek, on the other hand, also exhibited glimpses of other extraordinary skills as early as two years old, remembering things with perfect memory and reciting books line by line flawlessly. Despite his lack of education, he would get a job handling payroll for a business by the age of 18 and barely spent a few hours a week because he was able to do all of the calculations in his mind. Peak's IQ was only 87, despite his great achievements, and he lived a peaceful existence in the care of his family until Rain Man. Following that, he often traveled the nation with his father, campaigning for disability tolerance and showcasing some of the incredible things that he could accomplish. Number 13. Leslie Lemke Leslie is another savant on a long list of people who had inspired Dustin Hoffman's character in Rain Man, though Leslie had a bit less of a direct effect on him. Leslie was born with an IQ of only 58, though his parents noticed that he had the power of processing information very quickly, meaning that as soon as he could hear a song on a piano, for example, he could then play it back almost immediately. And that is exactly what he did. Hoffman saw Leslie playing piano after just listening to the song and playing it back beautifully. So beautifully, in fact, that it moved Dustin Hoffman to tears and motivated him to embody someone with the same challenges and gifts as Leslie. Many people have tried to stump Leslie with complex melodies or songs he may have never heard before, but each time he nails it perfectly. Even if he doesn't know the lyrics, he'll make them up on the spot, but still perfectly replicate the notes of the song. Number 12. Stephen Wiltshire while Kim Peek would be considered the Rain Man, Stephen Wiltshire, on the other hand, was considered the Cameraman. He has what's called photographic memory. Stephen is an architect and artist who's been diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder and is well known for his ability to sketch a landscape with just a single viewing of the scene. To help himself refine the gift, he attended City and Guilds Art College, where he majored in fine art. Wiltshire was born deaf and was diagnosed with autism at the tender age of three. This would occur in the same year that his father was killed in a motorbike accident, and after the tragedy, he moved to Queen's Mill School in London when he was five years old and had shown a keen interest in sketching there. It was via his paintings that he first began to communicate with people around him. He started sketching imagery of post-earthquake cityscapes and automobiles when he was only eight years old. 
Using his natural talent, Stephen would be able to travel the world, exhibiting his work in cities like Paris, Venice, and Berlin. It really is inspiring and touching to see people with such limitations achieve such great things in the world. Number 11. Ellen Boudreau Keeping up with the musical theme, Ellen Boudreau is another example of someone who would be born blind but showed flashes of genius when given anything musical. Ellen was born with a vision handicap, though as a baby she could already hum along to the lullaby playing in her cradle. After listening to it once, she could play any kind of music. However, she's more unique than that because she can also keep a tempo down to a matter of seconds without seeing a watch. And thus, she's known as a timekeeping wizard. This genius has an additional unique quality. Despite her severe vision impairment, she's able to produce a chirping sound that bounces off of things in her route that can go about without assistance. One might say that her blindness has in fact been compensated by her exceptional hearing. Though neurologists differ on what the actual cause is of her superhuman hearing. Right now, though, she's in a band called The Dire Makers, where she's the lead soloist and has an appearance in a book called Islands of Genius, Visionary Cities of the Future. Number 10. Daniel Tammet It can be very difficult for doctors to understand how these superhuman abilities develop because it's hard for the patient to explain exactly what they're experiencing. But with Daniel Tammet, his ability to explain his experience is also part of his genius. He has the ability to do mind-boggling mathematical computations at rapid speed, which is even more amazing. He's also fluent in seven languages and is now working on developing a language of his own, and also is able to see numbers as forms, colors, and textures. I can't even begin to imagine what something like that would look like. And so, as a result, experts are now debating whether or not his extraordinary skills are the key to unlocking the mysteries of autism. Tammet has been fascinated with counting since he was three years old and when he had an epileptic episode that had left him paralyzed. He's now 26 and a mathematical prodigy who can calculate cube roots faster than a computer and remember pi to 22,514 decimal places. Daniel has both amazing abilities and disabilities, and he lives with both of them at the same time. Number 9. Gillies Treyen Gillies Treyen is an autistic savant who began exhibiting remarkable skills for mental math and music at the age of five and has continued to do so ever since. Gillies was born with an apparent natural aptitude for sketching. Although he seems to have a passion with intricate architectural topics, he chooses a fictional setting for his work, a wonderful metropolis called Urville, which is named after Dumont de Urville, a French outpost in the Antarctic. According to him, Urville is a huge city with a population of 11,820,257 people. It has its own geography, street layout, and architectural style, all of which are represented in great detail in his imagination. Gillies came up with the concept of Urville when he was just 12 years old and began building it out of Legos. As he grew older and his vision for the city expanded, he realized that his drawing abilities would allow him to expand expand the concept of the city even further and began a series of detailed drawings of Urville, including streets, plazas, bridges, churches, promenades, airports, skylines, and street plans, among other features. If only I could have had a skill like this as a child. I already loved Lego so much, but to be able to create such an interesting and intricate world must feel so amazing. Number 8. Flo and Kay Lyman Florence and Catherine have a memory talent in which they can recall the day of the week for any day in the past or the future. It's a phenomenon known as calendrical savantism, just like Orlando Sorel. They also have a phenomenal autobiographical memory and can remember what they had for breakfast, what they were wearing, what the weather was like, and what they did that day at a moment's notice. Flo and Kay's talents were not acknowledged or appreciated when they were youngsters. No 
Nobody in their immediate family or vicinity made any effort to figure out what was going on in their heads. Eve, Flo and Kay's mother, was ashamed, as were many other moms of autistic children in the 1960s, and she attempted to keep her children at home in Irvington, New Jersey. Then, a man named Dave Wagner was the one who ended up finding their abilities and bringing them to the attention of the world. Dave's local news program ran a piece on the sisters' color charts in 1996, and they were then interviewed for an article. Dave thought that he knew a lot about music at the time, but Flo and Kay would blow him away. The attention that he gave them helped to provide a much better life for the twins, and above all, helped them to heal from the traumas that they had endured in their youth. Number 7. Jedediah Buxton and now we'll be taking a trip back into history to meet one of the original savants. Jedediah Buxton was an English mental calculator who was born in Elmton, Derbyshire, near Creswell. He was a person with a prodigious skill in some areas of mental calculation, such as adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing big numbers, and is referred to as the mental calculator. Buxton was born in the year 1707, and despite being the son of Elmton's schoolmaster and the grandson of the priest, he was actually illiterate and unable to write, except for mathematics. He also couldn't retain any other information apart from math and couldn't even recall how he learned certain bits of information like dates or what he had had for dinner. Yet his attention was so focused on math that he seldom saw exterior objects, and when he did, it was only to count their numbers. Even one time, he would walk over the whole area of the Elmton school grounds, which included thousands of acres, and calculated the area in a huge variety of different measurements. His memory was so good that he could stop working on a problem and pick up where he left off a week or even many months later. His incessant focus on numbers stopped him from gaining even the most basic of information, which would prove to be a huge hurdle for him throughout his entire life. Number 6. Derek Amato there are probably so many people in the world who come forward as an accidental savant who are actually really quite, well, basic. This is what the media thought when Derek Amato came forward with his newly found skills on the piano. Everybody thought that he was just some guy who was going to start playing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, but when he sat down and began to play, he blew people's socks off. Derek is, in fact, completely unable to read sheet music and knows literally nothing about music theory. And yet, when he sits at the piano, he can play wonderfully beautiful music. The music? Well, it's completely improvised. He just sits down and plays whatever comes into his mind. This would come immediately after suffering a traumatic brain injury after diving into the shallow end of a pool. And that's a pretty awful way to get such an amazing gift. Number 5. Lee Erseg. Lee Erseg was a bubbly child who worked on a ranch in rural northern Colorado much of her life. Then she had a severe brain injury and is now a talented artist and poet. She likes to spend time deciphering mathematical formulas, and when she listens to music, she can see sounds and hear colors, despite her acute sensitivity to light which is a condition known as synesthesia, which causes a person to see a sound or hear a color as a sequence of numbers and letters. Erseg's condition is so uncommon that diagnosing her with savant syndrome required many scientific investigations and brain scans. Erseg, who was operating a ranch in Maybell, Colorado at the time, said that she was feeding hens when she fell into a gully and sustained a severe spinal and brain injury in 2009. Doctors were originally skeptical that she would ever be able to even walk again. Nobody realized at the time that her brain had been damaged, but in a unique manner. Erseg has no recollection of her previous existence, including her upbringing, but also lost her capacity to experience emotion as well as her memories, which physicians refer to as the flat effect. She's subsequently learned to respond to social signals with a grin or a laugh, but claims that she doesn't feel or comprehend the reality. Action. Number 4. Edward Muybridge 
Now we have another history lesson in traumatic superpowers. Edward Muybridge was running out of books in the summer of 1860, which was also a problem because he was a bookseller. And so he sold his San Francisco bookstore to his brother, boarded a stagecoach to go shopping, and little did he know that his life was about to change forever. And the horses dashed forward much too fast. It eventually swerved off course and crashed into a tree, throwing Muybridge into the air and smashing him against a rock. When he woke up nine whole days later, his personality had completely shifted. He had previously been a kind and open guy with sound moral judgment. Though after the accident, he became risky, eccentric, and gloomy. He went as far as even killing his wife's lover. He may have also been a genius, though I suppose that's for all of you to decide. Do you think that this accident unlocked his genius, or did he just go totally nuts in the end? Number 3. John Sarkin after suffering a major stroke while on the job, John Sarkin decided to quit being a chiropractor, all because of his brain's attempt to make sense of the universe at a large age. The then 35-year-old became an explosive visual artist with a fierce desire to create as a result of his truly wild experiences. I'm John Sarkin. Artist. Sarkin's tale began on a scorching hot day in 1988 when he was out golfing with friends. The throbbing and agonizing ache in his head, accompanied by ringing in his ears, was unbearable for him. And soon, his brain began to swell and hemorrhage. Shortly after an operation, Sarkin awoke to discover that he had transformed into a totally new person and had an incredible urge to gift and to create. What distinguishes Sarkin's situation from others is that he's still able to recall his previous life. Sarkin's artwork often incorporates phrases, crosshatches, and pictures that are layered one on top of another. His paintings, which have a cartoonish feel to them and have been published in publications like The New Yorker and The New York Times, are currently on display in private collections across the globe. Number 2. Nikolai Kraglyachinko while most people on the list have gained some kind of artistic or mathematical talent, Nikolai Kraglyachinko had a much more physical superpower. He had become completely magnetized. Nikolai, then 12 years old, was coming home from school one day when he stopped to rest against a light. A short circuit in the lamppost caused a shock of electricity to send him flying across the street, which was unfortunate for him. Nikolai, who is a comic book enthusiast, quickly went about putting his newfound talent to the test, which is strikingly identical to the power that's possessed by a Marvel character known as Magneto. Nikolai's schoolmates were enthralled by his newfound talent, which is totally normal for children their age, but little did they know at the time that he was capable of transmitting his ability to others, transforming them into human magnets as well. Nikolai isn't the first real-life Magneto to have appeared. The magnetic superpower was acquired by a whole Russian family in 1987. According to The Guardian, Leonid Tenkev and his wife Galina, their daughter, and their grandson were all able to attach metal items to their body a year after the 1986 Chernobyl radioactive catastrophe. Number 1. Rory Curtis and now for our final entry, allow me to introduce you to Rory Curtis, or as he thought, Matthew McConaughey. This is not a joke. He literally thought that he was not only Matthew McConaughey, but that he spoke fluent French and that he was in Normandy. The story behind him apparently being possessed all began in August of 2012. He was driving with one of his friends when he hit a truck going full speed. Fortunately, nobody would be killed. Killed. But he ended up in the hospital for quite some time with severe brain damage. When he awoke, he began speaking French, and not just gibberish, but fluent and perfect French. Speaking French had a certain dialect. He had learned a bit in high school, but nothing close to the level that he had when he awoke. After a while, he came back from his stupor, but while he was in it, his father did some research and found out that they had some ancestors from the area 
of Normandy that Rory was claiming to be in at that moment. So perhaps he was possessed, who really knows? The brain truly is an enigmatic and powerful thing, and I think that the people on our list are proof that humans are far more capable than we give ourselves credit for. I hope that sometime soon we can unlock all of these secrets, and maybe some of the people on the list will be the key. Which of these superpowers do you wish that you had? Without the trauma, of course. Let me know in the comments below. Also check out the other cool stuff showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time.